Hi everyone, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and in this video we're going to look at pKa. Now pKa is actually calculated from Ka, which is the acid dissociation constant. Um, and it's actually worked out in a very similar way to how you'd work out pH. So where pH is the um, is looking at the amount of H plus ions that we have. And that's where I want to start. I want to start with how you can remember how to calculate pKa. So if we look in the top here, um, you probably might know that pH is the minus log of H plus ions. Now, um, the P bit could effectively mean the minus log, and the H plus bit is obviously how many H plus ions we have. So the pH is effectively the minus log of H plus ions. It measures how many H plus ions we have in solution. Um, and pK is very, very, very similar. So you have P bit, which means minus log, and Ka is obviously just Ka. So to work out the pK value, we do the minus log of Ka. And it's as simple as that. It's really straightforward. Um, so we're going to do that first. We're going to see how we can calculate pK in this very simple question here first. Then we're going to go on to an extended uh, calculation and see where pK, pK can fit in with an extended calculation. So we'll start with this one up here first. So it says calculate the pK when Ka is 1.24 times by 10 to the minus 5 moles per decimeters cubed. So we're going to start with writing down, I'll do some red so we can see the difference. So um, pK is, uh, we'll put that over there. So pK equals the minus log of, K, of, um, of Ka, and our Ka value is 1.24 times by 10 to the minus 5. So that's what we're going to put up there. Um, and if we put that in your calculator, um, you should get a pKa, a pKa value um, of 4.91. Uh, and that is the value of pKa. Now, that's a very, very simple way of doing it. But um, normally, these things are integrated within bigger calculations. And that's what I'm going to show you here. Um, but before I do that, I want to show you how you can rearrange the um, pKa expression, the pKa equation, to work out Ka, and it's actually in a very similar way as to how you'd work out H plus signs with a pH equation. So all we do is the Ka value um, is equal to, uh, and this is anti-log, so if you press shift log in your calculator, you should see a little number 10 that flashes up, uh, and then a little um, icon should flash in the top right hand corner, and that's where you put your minus pKa value in the top. So this is important because we need to know that to work out this equation here. And again, two more equations pop up as well in this particular calculation, which is your Ka expression. Obviously, if we have pK, we need to know the Ka expression. And this one pops up again, which is pH um, equals minus log of H plus. And this is how we can work out the pH of something. So uh, these are obviously very common questions. And we know we have a Ka expression um, because this question is talking about ethanoic acid, and that's a weak acid. When we're talking about weak acids, we use the Ka expression. So let's have a look at this question. It says ethanoic acid has a pKa of 3.42 at 298 Kelvin. Calculate the pH of 0 0.040 moles per decimeter cubed of ethanoic acid. Now, we need to look at that question and say, right, what is it we need to work out? And what we need to work out is the pH. So here's an equation with pH in, and it has H plus in. Now, nowhere in that question does it say about H+. Plus. So we have to somehow um, work out something else from there. So if we look at our Ka expression, we can say we have H+, plus in here, uh, we have Ka, and we have concentration of HA, which is our acid. Now, we have the concentration of HA, but we don't have Ka. So to work out Ka, we can use um, the pKa expression to work out Ka. And that's the first thing we're going to do first. So, if we try to work out this here, so we're going to work out Ka equals the anti-log, which is the 10, to the minus pK. We have a pK value, and that is 3.42. And then that can give us the value of Ka. Now, our value of Ka, in this case, will be 3.80 times by 10 to the minus 4. And that's moles per decimeters cubed. So that is our value of Ka, which is there. Um, and now we've worked that out, we can now work out um, our H plus uh, value over here. Now, if we rearrange that, 
And um, this expression here, because we know the Ka and we know this value, so we can work out H plus in order to work out pH. So our concentration of H plus, if we rearrange that, uh, H plus squared will equal the value of Ka multiplied by the concentration of ethanoic acid, because that's the acid that the question was talking about. So we'll multiply them two numbers together, uh, and if we put them into, uh, if we actually substitute these into the numbers, there's our K expression there, which is 3.80 times by 10 to the minus 4. I'm going to multiply that by the concentration of ethanoic acid, which they've told us is 0 0.040. So there's our two values there. And then if we multiply them two, we should get a H plus squared concentration um, of 1.52 times by 10 to the minus 5. There you go. Right, now obviously this is H plus squared, so we need to just work out the concentration of H plus. And that's easily done. All we have to do is square root that answer there, and that should tell us the concentration of H plus. So the concentration of H plus um, should, if we square root that, we should get a value of 3.90 times by 10 to the minus 3. And that's moles per dm cubed. So that's our concentration of H+. plus. Now the final step, because remember we want to work out the pH of this solution. So um, pH equals the minus log of H+. plus. We just worked out our H+, plus there. So um, pH, let's put that there, equals the minus log of 3.90 times by 10 to the minus 3. And uh, once we've done that, we should get a value of 2.41. And that is our pH of our ethanoic acid. And again, if you look at the number, it's actually sensible. Um, you would expect a weak acid to have a pH of around about 2.5 to about 3.5, so somewhere around that area. So if you get something that's bigger than 7, obviously that wouldn't be right. So this number is a sensible value to have. And you should always check that when you do calculations. Don't just put a number down and think, oh, well, that, that'll do. Um, you know, make the number has a value and it has a meaning behind it as well. And if you know the meaning behind it, then it allows you to have a greater understanding of what you're doing. Um, but that is effectively how we can calculate pKa. And I've also got a, an extended calculation here, which is uh, more likely what you'll get in the exam as well. Um, just remember on how to work out pKa with the minus log of Ka. Um, but um, other than that, that's it. Um, really straightforward. Keep practicing. Bye.